Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Carloop, data to empower Australia's EV revolution, and Hankook, driving emotion. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us. At the Sydney International EV Auto Show yesterday, our Federal Minister for Climate Change, Chris Bowen, made the announcement that the Federal Government has released new standards for V2X capability, which means that any EV owner with an electric vehicle with this capability of V2X, which includes V2L, V2H, V2G, will be able to power their home or export energy back to the grid effectively by the end of the year. And I quote, he said, if you've got a car with V2G capability and a bi-directional device, you could be using that car to power your house before the end of this year, meaning 2024. It means when you pick your next EV, you won't be buying just a car, you'll be buying a household battery on wheels. Interesting. It's not going to happen overnight for everyone. Not every manufacturer is at the same place, but it's now going to be enabled in our system. So it's a really, really important step forward. And he said it's about ensuring grid stability and it's about ensuring maximum use of every single electron, ensuring consumers get maximum value from their assets. And he also mentioned the point about electric vehicles helping to stabilize the grid during peak periods. So before I give you my take on this as an EV owner, I just want to explain to you what V2X is. V2X includes three major things, V2L, V2H, and V2G. V2L, which stands for vehicle to load, actually already exists for many brands of EVs, including my BYD seal behind me here. I'll demonstrate to you what that means. So in this scenario, I've got a V2L adapter, which came included with my BYD seal, plugged into the charge port of my car. And then on the other end, we've got a power board with two sockets, which basically enables any appliance with a 10 amp plug to be used, powered by this vehicle. The most striking demonstration I can use is with a hairdryer. So let me just turn this on. So this hairdryer currently is being entirely powered by my BYD seal, an electric vehicle using V2L, which is part of the V2X family. Now, prior to yesterday's announcement, officially speaking, no electric vehicle can export energy to the home in its entirety or back to the grid with any commercial device because these standards had not been released and this capability was not switched on yet. But because of yesterday's announcement by Chris Bowen, it means that once electric vehicle manufacturers like BYD and others in the market get their vehicles tested and approved for V2X in Australia, we as owners can suddenly utilize this huge battery in these EVs to power our home or export back to the grid. So what does that actually mean in theory? Well, at the moment I've got a home battery here in the Tesla Powerwall 2, and that has a capacity of 13.5 kilowatt hours. So contrast to my BYD Seal, which is the long range variant, it has a battery pack of 82 kilowatt hours, which means it's actually got six times the capacity for energy storage when compared to my Tesla Powerwall 2. So just let that sink in for a minute here. I'd have to buy five more of these babies or the Tesla Powerwall 3 to have the same amount of storage as my BYD Seal and it wouldn't be as versatile because I couldn't drive these batteries around town. Whereas with my car, of course, I can use that to get around town and go on road trips. So to put into practical terms, how I use my home battery is like this. On most days when the sun is out, the solar energy from my solar panels on my roof will charge the Tesla Powerwall 2 during the day and once the sun goes down, it'll discharge and power the rest of my home until it runs out. And most months of the year, we're talking like six months of the year, when the weather's quite good, let's say around autumn and spring, it manages to do that quite effectively until the morning. Now, during the other six months of the year, during summer, during winter, when we've got to either cool or heat the house, then that's when we require more stored energy because you know heating and cooling requires far more electricity than cooking, cleaning, or washing up. So for a few years I've pondered, is it worth getting a second battery? And unfortunately, the economics don't quite add up for my situation. Everyone's circumstances is different, of course. But now, with the announcement that our electric vehicles will be able to be V2H or V2G compliant by the end of this year, that's great news because even during the summer and winter months, when I need that extra energy to cool or heat the house, I'll be able to do that because I've got a much bigger battery in the BYD seal and also in our Tesla Model Y, if Tesla come to the party as well. So then we need to ask a deeper question in that, if you use your car battery to power your home, when you discharge the entire car, potentially leaving you not much in the morning, again, it depends on how much energy your house actually uses, right? But one way to certainly get around this is to sign up with a time of use tariff plan that gives you a very low off-peak rate. A lot of those EV 
charging plans have that very low rate down to like sometimes five cents per kilowatt hour. And this is where V2X is very useful because once you get to that off-peak tariff period, you can actually stop using the car to power your home, but instead use the grid to charge your car at that very cheap off-peak rate. So that's V2 Home, where you could potentially use an EV to be self-sufficient in combination with solar panels. The other scenario is V2G, where you can start to export electricity back into the grid. Now, I reckon the best time to do this would be during that peak period, usually between say 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. at night, when basically everyone is home and energy loads are high for most households, and that puts excess strain on the grid. So currently in November 2024, we've got over 220,000 EVs in Australia, and a lot of them will be V2X compliant once these new standards are formalized. We don't have the full details yet, so I'm sure they'll be teased out in time. But can you imagine, during that busy period between 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. when everybody's home, cooking, cleaning, washing up, doing homework, watching TV, etc., etc., putting the aircon on, putting the heating on, loads are high, the grid is under strain, there's no solar, there's not that many home batteries, relatively speaking, just yet. Imagine having a fleet of EVs being able to do the hard work by supplying the stored energy in these cars, again, with huge batteries like mine, 82 kilowatt hours, six times the amount of energy as the Tesla Powerwall 2 behind it, being able to stabilize the grid and supply the energy required for Australia. EVs are your friends. They can help power your home. And it's not even your EV. Someone else's EV is actually helping you out. Think about that for a second. So in summary, announcement yesterday at the EV show, new V2X standards have been released by the federal government, should be ready by the end of the year. It's just up to each OEM car manufacturer to uh, apply for testing and to get that all certified and compliant and suddenly your car battery will be used to power your home and potentially power the rest of Australia as well. So for me as an EV owner that's fantastic. I probably won't even buy another home battery because I've got a huge battery on wheels right here as the federal minister said. In fact we've got two and suddenly if I'm shopping for my next car I'm definitely going to buy an EV that's V2X compliant particularly V2H and V2G because it makes a lot more sense to be able to power my home during those peak periods and then charge it when it's cheaper or fill it up with solar power during the day if there's enough sun available. All right, everyone, I hope this video has made sense. I've tried to simplify what it means to be V2X compliant, particularly with V2H and V2G, the new standards are out. My car's already V2L capable, as with a lot of EVs currently on the market. It was always able to supply energy out of the car to power an appliance. But now with the new standards, hopefully soon I'll be able to purchase a bi-directional charger, replace my home charger over there, and then power my home and potentially even make some money or offset my electricity bill by exporting to the grid at hopefully a favorable tariff. Thanks for watching everyone. I want to hear from you in the comments. Number one, is this good news for you as an EV owner? Are you going to utilize it the way I described? Or can you think of another scenario where this application might be useful? Number two, if you're not an EV owner yet, Will you now consider an EV given this new technology? Number three, if you're already a current EV owner and your manufacturer doesn't apply for this standard, will this affect what you choose for your next car? All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy charging.